see the light. I see it. Jesus, Jesus bro. <laughs> Yep, I'm done. All right. I, I feel saved. Do you feel saved in your soul? I mean... <laughs> I felt worse. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Kaylin Shaner, author, blogger, and now YouTube extraordinaire. Um, this is my fiancé, Andrew. I barged my way in completely uninvited. Yes, he's good at that. <laughs> <laughs> Happens. Hey, this was my idea for the movie. So I deserved it. Yes. Um, kudos to him for recommending this movie for our little movie night tonight. Um, I wasn't expecting this to be my first official YouTube video, but it just it just kind of happened that way. We watched the movie. Um, I'm a reviewer, so I thought, oh, I'll re review this movie. I like Channel Awesome. I uh, love the Nostalgia Critic and um, Cinema, Snob. Cinema Snob. Yes. She loves him so much she forgot his name. You. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I'm so sending this to Brad Jones. Yes, we absolutely have to. Oh, you think I do? <laughs> um, so we watched this movie, and it's about a year old. You said, right? They're yeah. about the, the title is Jesus, bro. I don't believe we yes, mentioned Jesus, bro, with the comma. With the comma. That's mm -hmm. very important. Jesus, bro. Now, if anyone's unfamiliar with the subject matter, which I'm sure a lot of people are, it's a small independent movie, we're dealing with a parody of Pure Flix. Yeah. Pure Flix is a lovely little company that puts out what I like to call Christ-sploitation movies that are not good, we'll say. Their whole point seems to be about providing entertainment for the Christian community which is great. They have their own set of criteria. They they don't like cursing and you know violence and all of this. And and Pure Flix provides a set of movies. It's it. They have DVDs. They have a website for streaming. It's basically Netflix for Christians. And it's good that that community has something. But the plot, the writing of these movies, could they at least be good? You know. So Jesus Bro is a l very lovely, I was going to say loving, it's not loving at all, it's a scathing <laughs> parody of this. And it's it comes to us from the Channel Awesome camp, so Doug Walker, Rob Walker, Brad Jones, uh, Obscure Snoopa, actually, who's no longer affiliated, but... Mm -hmm. It's got a nice little uh, camera chambers. Yeah, and, Mal yeah. and Malcolm's the devil. Malcolm plays the devil, yes. Uh, and so, let's let's go dive into the plot here. So, what we have is a YouTube atheist, which uh, that's, that's what we're doing right now, who goes I'm undecided, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> who goes on these rants, again, railing against Christianity, like, Why I Hate the Pentecost, it was a title of a video in the movie. And you know, other things like why, uh, what was Christ Chicken, I think? Oh, I'll yes. Christ Chicken was a very obvious parody of Chick fil A, and they're his favorite sandwich in the whole world, but he wants to eat it on a Sunday, damn it! <laughs> so, uh, I would just like to appreciate for a minute the. because they cover so many tropes in this movie of pure flicks and Christian movies in general. And I just, I kept giggling to myself, because the main character is an atheist, a YouTube atheist, and he's portrayed as the most cartoonish villain, like, skin your puppies, kind of, just absolutely... Literally vomits into a bucket upon yes. hearing somebody praying a few tables away. Screams! Screams at this customer at this fine restaurant for bowing his head, and he even makes a point of, you're not even saying the words, you're just mouthing the words, and then proceeds to take the ice bucket while he's on his, his date with his long-term girlfriend and just vomits into it. And when Tamara, who makes the cameo in this movie, plays a waitress, takes a bucket away from him, proceeds to vomit into the bread basket. 
which shortly thereafter he is dumped by the date that uh, he has taken there. Not even because of that, but because he fails, he, he fakes her out on a proposal. Yes. Which, uh, honestly, I think that makes the joke work better, <laughs> that she didn't dump him for just being an asshole. Yeah. Um, she, she's painted as this totally annoying, obnoxious woman. Well, uh, her entire role is to provide useless exposition. That's the joke. Yeah, yeah. Like, so she's she's a Christian, but her entire personality is based upon... Um, being an exposition how, dumb. How, how do you say it? Painfully specific. Yes. So every sentence this woman utters is... Well, hello, my boyfriend of three years, eleven months, and two days, <laughs> like, right. whose job is YouTuber, atheist, and it just yeah. every sentence is like that. <laughs> Except when it's not. Occasionally it isn't. Oh, yeah, the, I loved that, because at one point, like, halfway through the movie, she's like, a after they've broken up... She's cured of it by yes. her her new husband. And, and she's like, you didn't even notice that I have dropped my habit of being really specific and, you know, providing all this exposition, and then immediately goes back into it. So you have this moment of, oh my god, she wasn't doing it. I didn't even realize. Like, it just went right over my head, and then immediately goes right back into it. So it kind of psyched you out. Attention. Yes, right. it's beautiful. It's very lovely. <laughs> and, uh, when he fakes her out, it's because he's won Atheist of the Year Award presented to him by Doug Walker, thank God. <laughs> who is just, he's having a blast in oh this, you can God, just yes. tell. He's having so much fun. Yeah. And so, oh, after being very righteously dumped, he's out celebrating at the bar with his black sidekick, who is also straight out of the Pure <laughs> Flicks movies, just... <laughs> I mean, it's a parody. It's he he is there to only provide advice and guidance and humor humor to the main character, and he, his humor. own his own issues are never addressed. And he says them, but the main character is so self involved. He never know he never comments on. Uh, he comments once on ruining the black man's yes, wedding. Yes. He he he's not sorry for it. Yeah, he's not sorry it. for it. Um, he says nothing about the guy's wife having died in a car crash. So this black sidekick, you know, trademark, like yeah. that, that's just what he's portraying. Um, this trope is is just like he's got his own life and his own problems, and the movie never delves into it ever. There's a lot of fun little touches to the movie that way, though. Mm -hmm. Like, and eventually, when we get to this bar scene, he uh, gets served beer made out of holy water from the local microbrewery, which then causes him to pass out and go meet Santa Christ. No, I did not misspeak. It is Santa Christ. It is not Jesus. I think my favorite, one of my favorite lines was, uh, look here, Christ Kringle. <laughs> but, so we, we meet the, the Santa Christ character who makes a deal with our lovely, lovely main character, just a beacon of sunshine, this man, mm -hmm. that uh, if he can go back to, to Earth and convert his millions of YouTube followers that are all angry atheists into being Christians, then he will make it work out so he can get back with the girl who had just dumped him, which had, you know, made him more sad than he may have originally anticipated. Mm hmm And so that's based, that's essentially where we get the plot moving. We, we get this guy who's attempting to do the impossible and convert internet atheists. <laughs> Which, for anybody who's ever had the pleasure of engaging in a debate with these people, I'm an atheist and I think these people are dicks. <laughs> it's, it's just true. No, is that real life or in the movie? Oh, no, real life. In the atheists are the worst. I've, I've never had the pleasure, of course, I'm a and little non-confrontational, but... Anonymity makes everyone assholes? Yeah, yeah, that I agree with. 
And then the super special assholes are the ones that tend to float to the top because of the most outlandish. The the ones in the movie specifically are painted very much as the main character was in the beginning of the movie, where you just believe that they would set people on fire just for the fun of it. Like, right, these, yeah. these are the worst well, scummy people. Th- they're also all, like, neckbeardy trolls that live in their parents' basement. Yes. Like, you know, all of them are just, you know, scum of the earth. But, uh, and a- of course, after he turns Christian from his vision after he had a near-death experience from drinking holy water, uh, all of his fans completely turn. Uh, and, you know, the, you know, the standard YouTube thing when people hate you, death threats, and uh, unlike, unsubscribe, and, you know, all that fun stuff. But, so his, his plan is not working at all. He's converted zero, zero people. Doug Walker comes in, and he had given um, the main character, whose name is Rick, I don't think we mentioned that before, he gives Rick this, or offers him, or nominates him, or whatever, for this uh, Atheist of the Year award. Yeah, that's the beginning of the movie, we glanced over that. Yeah, and comes back, and is like, I need this award back, and I'm so ashamed of you, and I dislike, what was it, downvoted, I downvoted your video, I have never downvoted a video. <laughs> and so he gets his goons to beat the living hell out of Rick, while he's, you don't see it. You, you see the gun standing there, and then you see uh, Doug Walker give the orders, and then it, it, you like you can tell that Rick's being just beaten, beaten up, up yeah. while Doug Walker is just comically villainous and standing there and <laughs> yeah, he's, he's loving every second <laughs> yes. he's on screen. You can just tell. Absolutely. I, I feel like Doug Walker just relishes any chance he gets to not be the nostalgia critic on film. <laughs> He's been doing it for so long. <laughs> I feel like he just likes any time he gets a character who can go over the top. That's fair. You know. But, uh, yeah, that's true too. He's, he's very much a 110% actor. Yeah. But what he I lacks mean, in... What, what maybe he sidesteps in quality... He, he chooses to go for an absolute, just, what would you even call it? Is. Yeah. He hams it up. Yes. I, I'll put it this way. The, the man's on record for absolutely loving Jim Carrey as a kid. <laughs> What's that tell you? Yes. Yes, I can see that. Um, but. So the thing about the religious persecution, though, was. It's ripped out of every shirtless yeah. movie. Oh, my God. And I, I loved how they kept saying, God is testing me. I think God is testing me. I need to go drink that beer again to meet up with God to ask him why he's testing me when anything bad happens. And to be fair, some of the bad things yeah. that happen are like shattered kneecaps. Life never doles out, you know, unhappy circumstances on its own. Shattered kneecaps won't keep me from praying to my God. Ne- yeah, kneeling. So he kneels. I'm like, oh, no, no, yes, no. no. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> and just the, you know, the idea, like, there's a war on Christmas. There's a war on, you know, having any religious symbolism a- anywhere in public. That was like, actually the gag in the very opening of the movie. The very first video you get to see him make for YouTube is a campaign to change the name of a Christmas story like the, holiday yeah, story. like you'll shoot your eye out that movie to a holiday story. Yes. When are we going to ban Christmas? Yes. <laughs> well, I mean, obviously Christmas needs ban. Yes, obviously. There's no one likes Christmas. The Santa Christ has been taken out of Christmas, and I don't appreciate that. <laughs> um, to be clear, also, uh, the reason he is portrayed as Santa Christ isn't necessarily a knock on Christianity itself or God specifically. It's because the main character sees in his mind or equates in his mind um, that Christ is basically Santa Claus up in the sky, mm-hmm. then Christ in this movie dresses up 
like Santa Claus, so it's something that the main character would recognize or relate to. And also, it's a character that Rob Walker's played for years, so it just works. Also, they Christ have the costume on hand. Yeah. Also, Christ Kringle. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> so they're persecuting him religiously. Uh, he can't go hunting. And because, like, like every good God-fearing Christian, when you want to relax, you just want to shoot something in the heart. Yes. Drink, drink beer and shoot something in the heart, which I thought was hilarious. Because, I mean, on its own, it's funny, but also it's psychotically true. I, I grew up... It, it, you grew up in it, I didn't. So. I, I grew up in a Christian church, and it was almost scary. The amount of just devotion and almost like this fandom dedicated solely to hunting. Like, every Christian, except for my parents, and it wasn't that they were against it, they just didn't have time for it, but every... It, yeah. it was like a rite of passage. The father took his son out into the woods and shot deer. And there's nothing wrong with that, but it was such a cultural thing. Like, anyone in the church went out and sh like. To, to be fair, we also grew up in rural Ohio. Yeah. I'm not sure religion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's be fair. We, we grew up in a in Northeast Ohio in a town of ten thousand people. <laughs> yeah, everyone liked hunting. Yeah, it's just how it works. But it was almost like an aspect of re the religion for me at that <laughs> point. I didn't know a family aside from my own who didn't hunt. We, we get revisited by the the girl who dumped our lead. And uh, in the day since dumping him, she has now found a new husband and has had 19 children. One day. Naturally had 19 yes. children. Didn't adopt them. And uh, it, I don't know if you noticed in the picture, all, like, the rainbow of kids. Yeah. Like, it With one guy. She's married yeah. to this one guy, and she has all races and nationalities of yeah, children like, in, in Asian, one day. Black, white, you name it. <laughs> They're okay. all there. <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, has her own reality TV show at that point based around it called, uh, I, I believe it was 19 Kids Just because, because I, I Can. can. Yeah. <laughs> it's because I can. Yeah. She says that she's looking for five things in a husband. And one of the things that he's, he's four out of five, this, this main character, Rick, for her. And the only thing he doesn't check off the list, which is absolutely ridiculous because it's like he needs to be kind and this and that. And like, this guy's a dick. Right. He's horrible. It's, it's so a total lie. How he checks off four out of the five, I don't know. <laughs> the, Could not tell you. The only thing he's not is being a Christian. And that just kind of hit home for me as far as my upbringing because there was sort of this thing that a lot of girls in my youth group did back when I was part of the church that you dated them, you, d you dated these guys that were hot or cool or whatever and interested in you to bring them into the church. No, no, it, it's okay, I'm going to convert him. Like, you know, I, I'm, I'm so amazing that he'll fall in love with me and then he'll fall in love with Jesus. You know, like, we, we called it missionary dating, which is totally the trope that they're setting up with this girlfriend here. Like, his ideals don't match with hers so much that it's like, I don't know why she stayed with him for three years. We haven't even touched on Brad Jones show. No. Oh, God, yeah. Um. <laughs> but this is after he gets back from hell, and we, we find out that he hasn't talked to, I believe it was his brother, Willie for like seven years or something and of course they go to his house and it turns out to be Brad Jones who is like I, I'm not sure if he's parodying anyone in particular it, he's kind of like he's parodying Clay Walsh from old yeah. fashioned yeah. but he's also a bro <laughs> Doug Walker again but he's playing his twin brother who yeah. wants to make a Christ exploitation movie right. out of this guy's life? Um, and he he says he, uh, that they want to call it. Do you believe the identical is too old fashioned to prove God's not dead? <laughs> oh my God, I laughed so hard at that. It's a hell of a title, ain't it? Isn't it? <laughs> at any rate, we've been rambling for way too long at this point. 
And I don't really feel like giving away the entire ending. <laughs> so, please go give these people your money. You can either pay four dollars, I believe, to rent it on Vimeo, which is what we did. You can buy it for twelve dollars on Vimeo. Or you can buy the hard copy for, I believe, twenty dollars, which is the new No Doves edition. Well, not terribly new anymore, but... Mm, Newish. <laughs> but the new No Doves edition, which proudly proclaims on the front that the Dove Foundation has given it zero doves and thinks that its audience would find it rather offensive. <laughs> I really want that version. Like, I just, I, I want I'm to pay the money for that. I'm pretty sure it's the only one to sell now. <laughs> so with that on the I side. really want that one. At any rate, go buy something from these people. It's a good movie. I'm going to be looking at Brad Jones' other movies now <laughs> because this one was really good. Enjoy, and we'll catch you later.